Welcome to Odoo Essentials. When using POS, cash control is very important. It's necessary to keep records and analyze the balance. After all, cash is the most important liquid asset of your business. For example, do you ever wonder why your numbers aren't matching? Well, with cash control, you can control and settle your cash box at the opening and closing of every business day to avoid any errors. This prevents you from making mistakes such as overcharging or undercharging. So let's see how we can do this right now in Odoo. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter our point of sale application and then go to the configuration of our shop. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down and activate this option, cash control, which I've already done, but if you need to, do that and be sure you click on save before going forward. The next step is to add some opening and closing values. So let's click on this button. As you can see, I've already created some in a variety of coin and bill values, but if you would like to create one, simply click on the Create button. Okay, so then you'll add your coin and bill value here, and the number that you would like of that uh, coin or bill, and that will give you, of course, the subtotal on the right. I'm happy with what I have now, though, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the configuration of my shop and click on Edit. Now I'm going to add a default opening amount, and this is where those values really are useful for me. Okay, because I want to specify the actual amount of cash I need to have in my register before I open every single day, and I also want to specify the amount of each value that I want. Now I want to be sure that I have the right amount of each value so that I can give my customers the proper amount of change. So I'll go ahead and start adding these values. Okay, and then we'll click on save. Now let's go ahead and jump into our point of sale again, the dashboard, and open a new session for our shop. So if I look on the right here, I see that we are currently in the stage open and control. So since I have activated that option cash control, I now have these two stages active, the opening control and the closing control. Okay, otherwise it would simply be in progress and closed and posted. But now we have all four active in this session. So we'll go ahead and set an opening balance. All right, so I, I enter my store right before I open. I'm gonna count the cash that I have in my drawer to be sure that I have the opening balance exactly the way I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on confirm. Okay, so these are the values that I specified in my configuration. Confirm, my opening balance is 100 euro, okay? So now we're good to go, we're ready to start the day. So let's open the session, okay? And we'll continue selling. Now let's imagine that uh, there was a huge blizzard and of course not a lot of people are going out and shopping. Um, so I just had one customer today who will purchase a cabinet with, drawer, with doors, sorry. Okay, and they're gonna go ahead and pay. All right, so they will pay with 17 euros. Validate, okay. And the next order, we didn't have another customer, so we're gonna go ahead and close and confirm. All right, and so now we're gonna close our session as well by clicking on this button here. Okay, so as you can see, even though I clicked on close there, I'm still in progress. Okay, but to start the closing control, I actually need to click on end of session. All right, so here I see our opening balance of 100 added with our transactions of 1694. And this gives me a theoretical closing balance. So this theoretical closing balance should be the amount of cash that I have in my drawer at the end of the day. All right, so as of the moment, since we haven't specified a real closing balance, we see the difference, which in this case is negative 116 and 94 cents. Right, we also see our summary by payment methods here. Okay, now something else I want to point out before we set our closing balance is um, that we have the option to take money out and put money in. So maybe throughout the day you have more cash in your drawer than you would like to have at one time. So you might want to take money out and you can specify that there. You can report that action. Um, and it's the same for money in. So maybe you have been giving away your cash left and right and you need more cash in your drawer so you can keep giving your customers change. So then you will put money in and report that action there as well. Okay, so for now, let's go ahead and set a closing balance. All right. 
So um, again, it should be our theoretical closing balance if everything went properly, which is 116 and 94. So let's make it easy and say I had 11, 10 euro bills, one five, okay. 350, so now we see it's 116 at the moment. Okay. All right, and I believe it was 94, so let's go ahead and put four cents here, confirm. Okay, so now we have our theoretical closing balance and our real closing balance, which matches the theoretical closing balance. So our difference is zero, which is good. That's what we want it to be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and validate closing and post entries. So everything went smoothly, but sometimes your closing balance doesn't match the theoretical balance. So let's see what happens um, when we have that difference, okay? So again, we're gonna go ahead and start a new session. I'm gonna set my opening balance, of course, and again, that gives me the automatic amount that I should have in my drawer at the beginning of the day. I'm gonna click on Confirm, and I'm gonna open my session and continue selling. Okay, so let's imagine it's the same day. The blizzard was really terrible. Nobody wants to go shopping except for this one really brave guy who really needs a cabinet with doors. So let's go ahead and pay for this. All right, and validate. And then we'll close our session again. Confirm. Okay. So this time we're counting our drawer. Okay, we close. End of session, we're counting our drawer and we notice that actually we don't have the exact theoretical closing balance. I don't know how, but something happened where um, maybe I gave him too much money, who knows what happened, but there's an error here. So instead of 116.94, I only have 116 in my drawer. Okay, so again, it's super easy. I just have the 11 uh, 10 euro bills. Okay, I have 1.5 and I have 250s. Okay, so that's 116. We're going to go ahead and confirm this. All right, and we see that difference right away here. But of course, I'm not going to take the 94 cents out of my own pocket. Um, I'm just going to report this difference. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this button, validate closing and post entries. But when I do this, I get this warning saying that there is no account to find on the journal cash for the loss involved in the cash difference. So of course, if we have a difference, either if we uh, have too much money or a loss, as we do in this case, we need to report it. We need a place where we can keep track of everything that's happening, okay? Because we can't assume that every day will be perfect, every day will run smoothly, but we do need to keep track of everything that happens. So what we're gonna do is go into our accounting application. Okay, and we're gonna open configuration journals so that we can go into our journal cache and go, we'll then go to the advanced settings so that we can set the accounts, the profit and, um, yeah, the profit account and the loss account, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and define that now. For my business, I have the same journal for both the profit and loss. Okay, and I'm gonna click on save. Um, something I want to point out right here while we're already in the journal is if I go to the point of sale tab, I have this option called amount authorized difference. Okay, so I can edit this and say um, that the difference can be five euros. So it's okay if at the end of the day my cash drawer is above or below around five euros. If, if I have an amount any more than that, and a user is closing the um, session for the day, they will get a warning to say, contact the manager. All right, so if, of course, if you're the manager and you have a, um, a difference above or below the five euro threshold, you won't get this warning, but your users will. All right, so that's a really great uh, feature just so you can keep track of everything. So let's go ahead and save. We're gonna go back to our point of sale and Close this session, finally. Okay, so of course the difference is, again, only 94 cents, but in my case that's really important, so I still need to report that no matter what. And we'll validate and close, uh, validate closing and post entries. Okay, so everything seems fine. We've closed the session. Now let's see what this looks like in our accounting application and if we go to our journal entries. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove this filter that's there by default, miscellaneous operations. 
okay? And I see everything here, all right? So I see all of my um, POS entries right there, which is really great. Um, so I can see the debit and credit, okay? And that includes um, the amount that I was missing before, which we have right here. I'm just gonna move my camera quickly so you can see all of the fields. So you see that debit and credit, all right? So that takes into account the um, loss that we had, okay? That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.